Alright everyone, how's it going? I'm Tim here at Digital Armour, thanks so much for tuning in. So today I'm bringing you a brand new top 10 list and this time it's my favourite alternate wing conditions in Magic the Gathering. Before we get started though, it's time for our upkeep step. There's a few simple ways you can help the channel to grow and improve up on screen right now. Another way is by heading over to the channel sponsor Arcane Cards. They're an awesome online card store stocking MTG singles and sealed products. The link is down in the description, as well as a discount code to get 10% off your first order. And with that said, let's head to the main phase. Maze's End is up first. I wasn't playing during the RTR block, but I recently built a commander deck with this card in it. It's quite slow having to get 10 different gates out with it coming into play tapped, but there's definitely ways around that and it's ridiculously fun to play. Watch out for the deck tech next week. It's a very unassuming card that can sometimes catch people off guard. If you don't reveal the maze's end too soon, your opponents might just think you're using guild gates as part of an untuned deck. There's only two versions available, the set version and lovely alternate art pre-release version and both are under a dollar right now. All the gate action in recent sets has done nothing to boost its price or popularity, currently being used in 1,500 decks on EDH Rec. Approach of the Second Sun recently left standard after turning out to be rather quite good. It heralded the approach of a long and boring string of Azorius control decks that continues to this day with that pesky Teferi. The concept of the deck is fantastic, cast it twice and win, so you'll want to dig fast and hard to clear the 7 cards out of the way. The great thing about it as an alt win con is that you don't really have to jump through any hoops, unlike many others on the list, because of that it's already in over 3000 EDH decks. One standard deck with approach in that I really got behind though was Sunbird's Approach, a really awesome combo in Boros Colours. Mechanized Production has been one of my favourite win cons since it was released in Ether Revolt. In fact, one of my very earliest deck techs was a standard mech production list, where I won through enchanting either servos or clues with it. Now that was an awesome mechanic for real. Only needing 8 copies is quite achievable, especially if it's something you generate a lot of without relying on the mechanised production's ability. Once again, it's featured over 3000 times on EDH Rec, so plenty of help out there if you want to build a deck around it. Chance Encounter from Odyssey is a card I've never actually built around, but it is now firmly on my to-do list since Rakdos the Showstopper came out in Ravnica Allegiance. Flipping coins is actually way more prevalent than you might think. There's currently 57 coin flip cards available to slot into a Rakdos build. Highlights for me include Fiery Gambit, Mirror March, and of course there's Mana Crypt. Epic Struggle costs 2 and 2 green for an enchantment that says if you control 20 creatures in your upkeep, you win. It sounds easier than it actually is. Big board states draw a lot of heat, so you'll be prone to board wipes galore. But if you can find ways of mass producing creature tokens in someone's end step, you might be in luck. Cards like Ant Queen can get you there with infinite mana, and Avenger of Zendikar is another option if you've been ramping like mad. It's really cheap, but is starting to trend upwards, something to keep an eye on if you don't want an epic struggle with your wallet later on. Hellkite Tyrant is a badass straight out of Ravnica. Gatecrash to be exact, and then again in Commander 2016 in Breyer's deck. This dude loves artifacts and will scoop them all up for himself when entering the battlefield, and then if you've got 20, you win. It's quite a big number, and again you're very much broadcasting your attentions loud and clear. Again, generating artifact tokens can be your friend, or pairing it with Mica Synth Lattice is going to be brutal. Simic Ascendancy is yet another win con that makes you hit 20. This time it's 20 growth counters, and you get one each time you put plus one plus one counters on a creature. There's so much synergy with this in standard right now. Adapt, Hadana's Climb, Deep Root Elite. It's even fun in modern as my mate Max has shown over on his channel Jungle Fiverr and there'll be a link to his Ascendancy video. 
Hedron Alignment is possibly the weirdest card on the list. You need a copy of it in four different zones. In play, in your graveyard, in exile, and in your hand. A tall order, even more so in EDH. From what I can tell, it's impossible. Cards like Mirage Mirror and Copy Enchantment get you extra copies, but they obviously lose their shine when going to the bin or exile. In 60 card formats though, there's a few options. Delve is a good way of getting cards you want into exile, and Pull from Eternity can be used if too many copies are sent there by mistake. Liliana's Contract has a much more achievable win conditions. You only need four demons in play to win. Yeah, they need to be different demons, so you can't just shapeshift the same one, but there's no fun of variety in that anyway. So there's 105 demons in total. Some good, some bad, some ugly, but most of them are potent and expensive. That's where cards like Belby's Portal come in, cheating them out at instant speed, or by using one of my favourite cards ever, Arcane Adaptation, and turning all of your creatures into demons. This way in Commander, you only need to tutor for two cards and draw the creatures you need, rather than having to tutor out four demons. We finish the list with the card that started my love for alt wing cons, Mael's Aria. Some of you may know, Mael the Anima was my first commander deck I ever built, and I just crammed all the Naya goodness from Alara block into it that I could. And this was the goal of the deck, play five fives and try to keep them around long enough that I could win. That old deck wasn't too clever though, it was my first attempt and mostly filled with pet cards. I'm looking at you Woolly Thokta. But it's definitely something I want to return to in the future. And there you have it, my fun look through some of the different ways you can win in MTG. Please let me know down in the comments what yours are, I'd love to hear them. If you want a more direct way to chat with me, you can become a member of my Discord server by hitting the link down in the description and joining my monthly newsletter. The first 50 people get a chance to win a Digital Llama playmat. If you haven't already, please remember to do all the usual YouTube stuff. Don't forget to check out Arcane Cards for your MTG singles and remember that discount code down in the description. Thanks so much for watching. Catch you all on the next one. There's new videos out every Monday and Thursday. Cheers. <laughs>